let's pop right here. As you might know, Monstera Deliciosa is the poster child of houseplants. It's everywhere, from plant shops to family homes, offices, dorms, and even film sets. You've seen it in movies, video games, as jewelry, on bed sheets, clothes, wallpaper, screensavers, the list goes on and on. They are native to Central and South America, including countries like Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, and Panama. And as with anything found in nature, there is a lot of variety there. For example, we've got the Brazilian form, the Sierrana, the Burlamax flame, the Borsiciana, also known as the small form Monstera, loads of variegated plants, and the classic, the original large form. And speaking of the large form, right from the beginning of my plant journey, I wanted those giant leaves so bad. Little did I know, these were super hard to find in garden centers here in Germany. I bought three different Monsteras, which all turned out to be the small form. Although they were pretty, it just wasn't the real deal. I scoured the internet for months, but the true large form Monsteras were either too big and or too expensive for me to buy. But just when I thought I'd never find my dream plant, I stumbled upon a massive Monstera Deliciosa in my vicinity. The best part? It was only 50 euros. The only catch was that I had to pick it up myself. That's how we ended up here. I just went to pick up the biggest Monstera Deliciosa large form. We picked it up in a little village and to fit it into the car, I had to take a top cutting. So this is it. It really sucked to have to cut the top off. It's always a little bit of a heartbreak if you have to cut such a big plant. Even this top cutting, is giant. <laughs> the plant is a little bit beat up. It was before already and then us dragging it up and down the stairs didn't help at all. I will do some maintenance now, try to clean it out as best as possible and then we have to figure out where I can put it in the flat because quite honestly um, you see my flat. It's pretty small. Just have a look at this giant leaf. My fiance had to carry it up the stairs, so big thanks to him. This leaf alone is absolutely worth it. That's amazing. Let's dust it first. And I'm just using like the Swiffer thingy. I see a little bit of yellowing here, but I don't see little spots or anything. So I really hope it doesn't have any thrips or anything like that. <laughs> What a difference. Look at that dust. That's some serious dust on here. I think I never saw a plant this big, this close. That's actually insane. <laughs> okay, this was really dirty. It is time to fix up the top cutting. I decided I want to cut it even further. I only heard that these are sometimes a little bit hard to root. So I'm thinking about cutting it down here, make a little stem cutting and then keeping the top chunk on to have at least something to root. Okay. okay, so we have this top cutting right here, a few aerial roots. I will have to cut off this leaf. I will let these callus over a little bit and then pop them into water. Also going to clean these. And guys, I'm sorry this is such an impromptu video because it was quite a spontaneous decision to actually buy this plant. It was just one of these moments where I think, okay, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I want to remove all of the brown parts on the stems and petioles. Usually that's where pests are hiding. And I'm just chopping off these brown and dried up parts. These leaves are in really bad condition. Some of the aerial roots are all dried up like this. 
I have never seen it like that. That is the aftermath. I used the bamboo pole that came with it to restake it. And I think it's pretty good for now. Let's check back on the top cutting. It was at this point that I found out it looks ridiculous. And not only that, it's also massively unpractical. Then I noticed this little bent leaf and I wanted to make a little wooden cast with some tape and try to nurse it back together. <clears throat> Oops. I was unsuccessful. Anyway, I found this really handy cash pot that's more vase-like and I can finally properly put the cuttings in my flat without them being a nuisance. For today, I think I want to leave the plant as is, just find a spot in the flat and I say that like it's easy to just find a spot for it in the flat. Okay, let's check out this soil. This is straight up just sand in here, which is not terrible, but also it's like super wet. And then we have a shit ton of roots growing into the pot, which is typically great. I do that too with my other monsteras, but I think this plant must be extremely root bound. I did a little bit of digging and I found some rotten roots. So I don't think the root system is particularly great. For the time being, the plant will have to stay inside the pot in this soil and just keep holding on. I was thinking about this corner, but um, we have a little issue. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Let's watch some TV. So I might. Uh... And this one blood hing so. Can dein Freund von der Tür Is it then too groß or is it perfect? I think it's too groß. Freund under deiner Pflanze durchlaufen. Self-sufficient woman, I see. Yes. My plan for today is repotting this baby. I noticed some yellowing on the big beautiful leaf. I see a little bit of yellowing here. And I'm kind of bummed about it because I think it's a goner. I definitely want to check the roots. I suspect, I don't know, the worst maybe, maybe they're okay. I just want to no, and I thought about a really smart way to do it. So I will attach a rope down here, then put it on top of these wooden structures in my home and kind of lift it up so I can work freely on the roots. At least that's the plan. First up, I'm not even going to try to contain this mess. The floor will be soil and I will have to clean up afterwards. This works actually so good. The plant just like hangs around here. I don't know why the previous owners put a ton of sand on top of here, but this makes things so much more messy. I'm kind of mad at them. Maybe they had fungus nets or anything. I mean, looking at this root ball, it's, it's entirely, entirely possible. possible. I don't think this plant was repotted in a very long time. Basically everything that's kind of black is root matter and it's rotten. It comes off so easily. This is actually devastating. I'm really glad I checked the roots because I don't know if the plant would make it if I didn't. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, that's crazy. Just look how much sand comes off here. Whoa. <laughs> Shit. Help. Sand help. This is a big ass project. Oh, for fuck's sake. 
I'll have to show you up close. This is such a mess. But just look what happens when I shake. There's so much sand. <laughs> it all comes off. All dead roots. Got them. The funniest thing is these people were so concerned I'm taking their plant home and if I would take good care of it they got this plant from their grandma or something and it's a really old plant obviously I would also want that someone takes good care of it but then you yourself are not really taking good care of it. I don't think these are toxic people or that they kind of did this on purpose they probably just didn't know better how to care for a monstera properly she's going to take a hit and she would probably die if I didn't do anything to fix this mess well wow, that's so sad I can just pull these off wow look at this root down here do you see this wow so this is still healthy it's nice and bright but just look at the sheer thickness of it that's amazing and FYI I haven't watered this plant yet since it's with me now I know why the soil wasn't drying out properly my guys that is a lot of roots gone and also a lot of soil gone I'm done I'm um, completely done the whole floor is just soil I will take one of my prop boxes and try to store the waste there you know what it's moments like these that I'm extremely happy I don't have a carpet in my house this would be so much more difficult with a carpet. <laughs> I feel like I'm at the beach. Nice. At this point, this thing is my best friend. Like, I need this thing every day. If you had told that my younger self, I wouldn't have believed it. You guys, I'm done with the roots. So this is what I left on the plant. Then we have some surface roots and then some deeper tap roots. And most of these are actually from the aerial roots that grew into the soil. I do want to keep those roots a little bit moist so they don't dry out completely and like die off even more. Okay. <laughs> Now can we please all pray I have enough soil to pot this baby up because I really don't want to go to the store again. I'm going to use the same pot again. I tried to clean it out a little bit. Now let's mix some soil. I also did add in a little bit of warm castings for fertilization. <sighs> Start filling the pot. Maybe a little. Let's try to get all of these noodles back in. Lift this. Preferably without everything breaking. This would be amazing. Kind of good. I need my boyfriend. Can you help me? So. Ist das langsam runterlassen? Ja. Runter, runter, runter. Got her back in, but I definitely need more soil. All of the roots are covered. I just want to top it up, so I will have to go to the store. But first, I have this huge bare stem here. 
And since the big beautiful leaf is already yellowing and hence going to fall off soon probably, I'm debating cutting it now. It really sucks because I loved how this looked and now having seen the state of the roots it's not looking good. I think I'm going to remove this whole section. Oh this sucks. Please don't hate me for it. I swear it's not an easy choice but I don't think I have a lot of other choices you know. Okay guys I'm going to do it. I think I want to cut down here. <laughs> oh That sucks. Mm. Woo. Shit. <laughs> I wanna stake it up a little bit nicer. Whew. Done. Can you guys see how freaking big this is? Let me show you. Okay, so I'm one meter and 60 centimeters tall. And this thing is huge. <laughs> one. I'm really trying to pay attention to the nodes and where the auxiliary buds are, like here, for example, so I don't cut into them. so hard. <laughs> I think I'll leave those as like two node cuttings in hopes that at least one of the auxiliary buds might sprout. My hands hurt so much. Holy crap, I'm so sad about this leaf. It's not even funny. Now I decided to put the Monstera chunks into a finely shredded sphagnum moss mixed with some perlite. And then I just submerged the stem cuttings like halfway into the mixture. Like... I think we're good. Actually, this looks really good. It's a little less in the way, which will make my boyfriend extremely happy, I think. I cross my fingers, my toes, everything I have, that she will be all right and the roots will recover from all of the things they've been through this day and also all of the rot because it was so bad. I also wanted to show you the top cutting that I took and what happened so far because I finally see something. On both we finally have tiny little white roots visible. Also a few new ones emerging from the stem. I'm not really seeing anything from the node of the stem cutting yet but I have time, I can wait. I'm just glad that there is at least some root growth happening. If you want to see how the huge top cutting and also the chunky stem cuttings do in the future, then just subscribe, hit the bell. I will definitely make update videos on that, but I think this will take its sweet time and it would just be too much for this video. check out my other planty projects right here. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye!